Welcome to SeedWorld 360. Hi, I'm Mark Zinkowitz, Senior Editor with SeedWorld Canada. Earlier this year, soil health and cover crop expert Kevin Elmi went on a fact-finding mission across central and western Ukraine. His goal? To understand how large-scale farming systems in the country are managing soil and what that means for the future of regenerative agriculture here at home. What he saw opened his eyes to the possibilities for cover cropping in Eastern Europe and what we can learn here in Canada. He also learned a few things about the resilience of Ukrainian farmers amid the Russian invasion of their country. Join me as Kevin takes us on his journey. So the biggest thing, you know, when we're going through, we were visiting some very large um, uh, corporate farms uh, scattered across basically central and western Ukraine. And the biggest shock was how much tillage was doing. They were doing, they were doing lots of plowing down to, you know, 12 inches, 30 centimeters, a lot of deep ripping, uh, disking, uh, you know, getting rid of all that, that residue on the surface. So I was really shocked on how uh, little soil aggregation they had from, from all that tillage that they were doing. As Kevin started digging soil pits and conducting infield assessments, the reality of what was happening under the surface became clear. LMC is your one-stop shop for seed and grain processing solutions. We don't just build equipment, we offer consulting services, 3D plant design, installation and service after the sale. LMC is with you every step of the way. Partner with LMC to maximize your quality and efficiency. From individual cheese to complete plant designs, we raise the bar for performance, ease of operation and reliability. And at LMC we know our success depends on our customers' success. I'm in fields and I'm, I'm doing assessments or, or observations in fields. You know, the things that I'm, I'm looking at is the, the first thing I'll do is I'll grab some soil and I'll smell it. I'll break the colloids apart, take a sniff. And so this is going to be one of the indications of, uh, of, you know, some of the bacteria that's in the soil that, that gives that good earthy smell. And out of the 28 different plots that we went to, there was one that actually had a nice smell to it and that earthy smell. The rest of them, you, you, you take the soil and you smell it and there's no smell to it. Uh, so the next thing, you know, the, the observation wise, I'm looking at the soil. Is it nice and smooth? So just like a tabletop or is it kind of crumbed up? And so it has good soil aggregates right at the surface. And once again, there was one one field that was was okay. It looked all right. The rest of them were you know, just tabletop, smooth. Uh, then I have a, a little uh, a microscope, handheld microscope. So I, I take a look at the residue that's on the surface, if there's any residue, and I'm looking for, for fungi on it. And it was very rare to find actually any active fungi on this residue. And that fungi is is needed when we're dealing with uh, with corn residue, uh, your your small grains, something with a, a wide carbon nitrogen ratio and and lots of lignin in it. We need that fungi to break that residue down. And it was once again rare to see any active fungi growth on this residue, which means there was going to be nutrient tie up. There was going to be you know this residue just won't disappear on us and if it's not disappearing it's not feeding the biology and it's it's not uh, cycling nutrients only one field out of over two dozen that kevin toured had seen a cover crop most operators had heard of the concept but few knew how to implement them cost effectively at scale with my the the soil health cover crop background these were some of the things that i was looking for and so out of the 28 sites the one had a, a previous cover crop and so the the whole idea of using cover crops was uh, they they've heard about it but they didn't understand where how you know how to implement old habits and tight margins die hard during his trip cover cropping was still seen by many as risky but not all yeah, there's um the the one one um manager uh, he sat at the end of the pit, uh, and as I was talking, we kept going like this. So I think that would be a hard no. Uh, there was uh, the one that that did the cover crop 
that previous year. Um, we had a good uh, discussion about how we can incorporate more cover crops into their, their management. Kevin believes real change in soil health in Ukraine and across the world starts with one principle. When I talk about my five soil health principles, the first one is keep a living root in the vegetative stage of a vegetative plant for as many days possible in the soil. Uh, that is the easiest thing to do. Um, you know, our soils are built on on plants that are that are green. Ideally, if we had livestock in there, that just makes things that much better. But having that vegetative plant is so crucial because up to 70% of the carbon that gets through photosynthesis gets released as a root exudate. That root exudate feeds our soil biology. When we're growing our annual crops, uh, you know, for our our, our spring cereals, our canola, peas, flax, uh, you go through the list. If it's an annual crop, we're only uh, releasing root exudates into the soil for about 30, 35 days of the year. The rest of the year, our soil biology isn't getting that liquid carbon, so it has to get its carbon sources through other sources. So it's going to be some decomposing plant material. And when that runs out, then they're going to start eating the soil organic matter. This is the reason why we're having so many problems with compaction, uh, crusting, uh, water infiltration for issues, water retention. Uh, it's, it, it's all relating back to this liquid carbon cycle that we are not supporting. Whether you're farming in Saskatchewan or Ukraine, Kevin says the challenges and mistakes are universal. We're fighting disease, so guess what? They're going in with multiple passes of fungicide. Um, they have insect problems. They have, once again, what country am I talking about? Because it's, it's all the same problem. It's over, over fertilizing with nitrogen. We have the wrong sources of nitrogen. We're, so those, those problems are all... <laughs> Oh, they're, they're so universal. And then they have water infiltration problems. They have compaction problems. They have, so once again, what country am I talking about? Because they, they're, they're similar problems across all, all the nations. The solution, Kevin says, lies not in reinventing the wheel, but applying what we already know. It's uh, basically the same species we're growing here for cover crops. So Vecilia, some of the, the, the millets, the Italian ryegrass, perennial ryegrass, um, uh, the different clovers, the vetch, you just go through the list and it's, it's the same species. Uh, timing is going to be a little different um, based on what your goals are. Uh, when you get further south in Ukraine, it's uh, a little bit drier, so we're going to be you know, dealing with uh, a little more drought-tolerant species, a little lower seeding rates. Uh, then when you get up to a place like uh, Chernobyl, uh, it was, uh, you know, very much a, a gray wooded soil. So we can use different strategies for, for the different areas. Now remember, all of this is happening against the unthinkable backdrop of the Russian invasion. Well, the, I talked to the one uh, uh, farmer that was really close to the front line, and he said uh, when, when the fighting began, uh, they just left uh, all the equipment, everything else. And uh, when spring rolled around, they, they went in and, and they went back and they said, okay, well, let's get a crop in. And what the first thing they found was any, if the Russians were on the farm, all of their GPS equipment was gone. Uh, their computers were gone. So they went old school farming. And uh, they said one of the first things they did is they beefed up their equipment so that this way, if they ran over a landmine, it would maybe just blow off a tire or something, not actually blow the, the tractor up. So they really beefed up the undercarriage of, of their tractors. Yeah, it's a real uh, eye opener when you look at uh, the, you know, the, the, what the farmers were, were willing to put up with um, and, you know, what they have to endure. Despite everything, tillage, skepticism, and the Russian invasion, Ukrainian farmers are still showing up to work their land, and they're asking the right questions. Here in Canada's seed industry, that matters, because whether it's Kyiv or Kindersley, one truth remains. Soil health is not about where you are. It's about what you do.